Welcome to On Open Source. Conversations with thought leaders in the open source community. Brought to you by I understand that there's also a fair amount of discussion on management of sysadmins mm -hmm. in the book. Sure. The first half is um, is more uh, system architecture and say best practices for things like email systems, backups, deploying desktops, keeping users happy. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the later half is more managery things. And we, we hit it in the li later half because sysadmins are always afraid of management. Right. Um, but really, right. when you become a senior system administrator, you start doing more and more manager kind of things. Right. We, we actually have a section on how to uh, stay technical if that's not your career, right. or is, if that's not your career goal. And then we go into the more managing things like, how do you build your team? How do you uh, build your organization? How centralized should you be? And how do you make decisions about how centralized you right. should be? Right. Um, and we talk a lot about hiring. I was going to say, do you have any sort of people management discussions as part of this? Yeah. Um, we have a chapter uh, called, basically, it's advice for the uh, technical manager mm -hmm. that is over a system administration team. And then the next chapter is advice for the non-technical manager. Uh, my idea is you know, if you can um, sort of tear those pages out and hand them to the first non-technical person above you in the management chain over your system administration team, this is mm -hmm. what they need to know. Okay. And um, it has been whispered into my ear that, uh, you, that this book also covers how to fire people, too. Yes. Uh, the Cause, last chapter... Because this is something that we need to do, is we need to go out and fire those sysadmins. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not a great topic to have to cover, but right. it's something that really happens. It's part of reality. Sometimes you need to uh, lock someone out. Uh, and So how do, you, how do you fire a system administrator um, uh, in a secure manner? Right. Uh, how do you lock them out? And we have a little three-point model for doing this. And it's also uh, one of the most important parts of that chapter is, to me, is the last paragraph where we talk about sort of the ethics of this mm -hmm. and how important it is to take this very seriously. Sure. You're changing someone's life in a very significant way. Yes. But also, how you remove someone from the company affects the people that are still in the company because oh, sure. they they see that and that is an indicative that that indicates how they're going to be treated. Well, and and in many ways, this is going to be, you know, nobody ever likes to get fired. Mm -hmm. No, nobody ever likes to know that somebody's being fired. But you know, doing it in a dignified fashion, doing it in such a way that the company's security policy, you know, because I know that I've been at companies where you know, oh yeah, so and so was fired two years ago and his username and password are still in the system. Sure. That's that's scary. Yeah, a lot of people, uh, a lot of companies were, were uh, in the last five years have been, you know, had to adopt the uh, Sarbanes-Oxley policies. Yeah. And yeah. I, um, I think Sarbanes-Oxley has a lot of great stuff in it. Mm -hmm. It's basically requiring a lot of the stuff that is recommendations in our books. Yeah. Um, one of them is if someone is fired, that you have to be able to disable all their accounts. Right. Why is this such a big deal? <laughs> you mean you couldn't? Well, most companies, you know, that is a problem to know where all the accounts are. Yeah. Well, to know where they are, to know who has what accounts on which systems yeah. with access to what data. Sure. You would think it'd be easier over time because people, things, account management's getting more centralized, but um, it it's actually gone the other way and for yeah. some organizations. Yeah, well, it's so easy to set up databases. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, anybody or their brother can download MySQL and get a database started and create an account and... Sure, but then um, having policies that encourage everyone to, uh, to use that. So mm -hmm. people start up new services and they save five minutes by not integrating into the single sign-on system and they cause, you know, possibly millions right. of dollars of, of problems. Right. And, and that's another area where uh, a convenient security policy is better than a, a strict security policy. So if you don't just say you have to use a single sign-on system, but provide um, example codes for uh, for the API that you've developed mm -hmm. in Java, Python, and 
Ruby all, and C++ all your other and languages, all those, yeah. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. then it, instead of saving five minutes by not doing it, you save five minutes by using the API. Right. And potentially a lot more than five minutes. Right. <laughs> so I understand um, that uh, your one of your co-authors engages in some very non-development related activity during her free time. You want to, you want to talk a little bit about that? I, or am I, I or are we revealing some secrets? I think you're talking about Christine. Um, it's not her free time. Actually, uh, while working um, on the first edition, mm -hmm. she uh, made a transition out of system administration okay. and uh, worked on getting a PhD. Uh, she got a PhD in fluid dynamics Okay. And, and she, what exactly does one do with a PhD in fluid dynamics? You uh, shop it around to Formula One race teams, and now <laughs> she is on uh, the Formula One race team, uh, I believe the BMW Formula One race team uh, outside of Zurich in uh, Switzerland. Um, oh, wow. And she designs uh, Formula One race cars. Nice. <laughs> so basically what you're saying is you write a book on system administration, and then you can become a race car driver. Yes. Well, they're very similar. You design a new aerofoil, and there's a release process. There's sign-offs and beta tests, and you put it into production. Yeah, but I got to imagine that beta testing an aerofoil has got to be a lot more fun than beta testing in you know a single sign-on policy. I mean, yes. maybe that's just me. <laughs> maybe that's just me. You know? Oh, I get to drive this time. Oh, I yeah. get to sign in this time. It just doesn't quite have the same feel to it. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> So is she still was she she was still part of the second edition though yes uh, yes so she uh, she definitely helped with the second edition and uh, in fact I uh, um, uh, spent time in Zurich with her sort of putting the final touches on a lot of the chapters oh that must have been rough yeah Don't fly to Zurich and let's finish our book together uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for you you're gonna uh, join a air stunt team or. Uh, yeah, that would be nice. I'm thinking Evil Knievel has been retired for many years. I, I there you could probably go. take that. There you go. I think there's a movie coming out about that. Yeah. You know? um, seriously, what, um, assuming the second edition is successful, which we have no reason to doubt it won't be, are there things you'd like to do for a third edition? Um, you know, every time I finish a book, I grab whoever's near me and say, if I ever say I'm going to write another book, shoot me. Just shoot me. Don't let me do it. And this quick is tip, my... Quick tip to all those out there. Every author says that, and they all lie. And they, they all lie. They all lie. Um, so this is, uh, I guess, technically my fourth book. And uh, what would be in the, the next edition? I like... Um, in the third edition, I would spend a lot more time on... Um, the design patterns of system administration. Mm -hmm. Design patterns is the big thing in programming languages, right, but right. I think a lot of the examples that we give in the book could be rephrased as in a, in a patterns-like format. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll look forward to that. Thank you. Um, one last question for you. Young kid coming out of college comes up to you and says, oh, I read your book. I just worship the ground you walk on. Give me some piece of advice to make me a successful system administrator for the future. What do you tell them? Um, take uh, public speaking and negotiating classes. Okay. Okay. Two things that are underlooked in system administration. You're always talking with people. You're always negotiating. It really makes a big difference. Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Sure. Or just read a, a book. You know, there's like the page a day negotiating book or something like that um, okay. really helped me. Okay, great. I want to thank you for your time and uh, enjoy the rest of your OSCON. Thank you. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.